الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to this uh, I would say this is the first uh, of our uh, episodes in Ramadan So today is Friday uh, the first of Ramadan May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a blessed month for us and help us use it in a way that pleases him and bring us closer to him during this month and help us to uh, do the things that he is pleased with and help us attain taqwa ameen ya rabbal alameen um, uh, so in, in, in this inshallah uh, as we said the first uh, few episodes we will be covering uh, issues of Ramadan where we call this part of the series uh, Ramadan Refresher in order to help you inshallah and, and remind rem, remind you I remind myself as well of some of the rulings uh, and the etiquettes of Ramadan the fast the prayer and other uh, etiquettes that are actually related to the fast the fast of Ramadan and uh, yesterday we spoke about uh, we explained the hadith where it really it's a divine hadith and it shows clearly how um, uh, important the fast is in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how much reward Allah gives for it. So if you missed yesterday's episode, I would recommend you actually uh, check it out. Uh, it, it is definitely, uh, you know, the content of the hadith is definitely extremely helpful and it focuses on the spirit of the fast, not merely the uh, physical experience of abstaining from food and drink and desire. So today we have a couple of hadith we're going to deal with and um, we have this hadith again I believe from Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu yes وَعَنْهُ أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالْ مَنْ أَنْفَقَ زَوْجَيْنِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ نُودِيَ مِنْ أَبْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ هَذَا خَيْرٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الصَّلَاةِ دُعِيَ مِنْ بَابِ الصَّلَاةِ ومن كان من أهل الجهاد دعي من باب الجهاد ومن كان من, من أهل الصيام دعي من باب الريان ومن كان من أهل الصدقة دعي من باب الصدقة قال أبو بكر رضي الله عنه بأبي أنت وأمي يا رسول الله ما على من دعي من تلك الأبواب من ضرورة فهل يدعى أحد من تلك الأبواب كلها قال Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Naam wa arju an takuna minhum muttafaqun alayhi This hadith is collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whoever spends oh, uh, whoever spends through two avenues two things like basically whoever uh, spends in this for the sake of Allah through a variety that for example the scholars mentioned that a person gives a dirham and gives a dinar or the person for example gives sadaqa and they pray so any any kind of goodness or any kind and specifically here there is something about spending in this hadith anyone who spends more than one kind for the sake of Allah so you can spend food you can spend money you can you could extend some uh, other type other clothing maybe or any type of help so whoever spends in a variety of ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah he will be uh, summoned or he will be called uh, by the gates or through the gates of Jannah meaning on the day of judgment Ya Abdullah, O servant of Allah, hadha khayr. This is such a great thing. This is a great, I mean, this is a, this is good. So what you spent is actually good. And meaning, this is, this means basically, you're going to receive the reward of the good that you have offered. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الصَّلَاةِ دُعِيَ مِنْ بَابِ الصَّلَاةِ So whoever was, whoever excelled in the prayer, was one of the people of the prayer, this person will be called or summoned to enter paradise through the gate of salah. وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجِهَادِ دُعِيَ مِنْ بَابِ الْجِهَادِ And whoever is from the people of jihad, he will be summoned to enter paradise through the gate of jihad. وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الصِّيَامِ دُعِيَ مِنْ بَابِ الرَّيَّانِ And who, if a person is from the people of fast, person used to fast a lot and fast properly as well. This is not only about quantity, but quality is a big uh, factor here. This person will be called to enter paradise through Bab al Rayyan, which is specific for the people of fasting. And whoever excelled in giving charity, uh, 
given uh, giving to people in need or or spending in any 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 avenue of good for the sake of Allah, then they will be summoned to enter paradise through the gate of as through charity. Abu Bakr anhu said, uh, O Messenger of Allah, um, it seems that there's no harm that a person could be, that if a person is summoned to enter paradise through all of these gates. Uh, the, uh, so is it possible that someone uh, could be called to enter through all of these gates is it possible the prophet ﷺ said yes indeed and i um, hope and it's likely that you are one of them and that basically who's going to be called through all of these gates it's someone who left no avenue of good except that they actually did something in it and i think this is what the beginning of the hadith refers to whoever spends in, in the form of a variety of things for the sake of Allah, this person will be called through the gates of Jannah. So meaning the Prophet ﷺ says, whoever uh, worshipped Allah in a variety of ways. So they they had a share in every avenue for good. Uh, let's say, for example, the prayer, the fast, jihad, the sadaqa, charity, uh, knowledge and learning and teaching, uh, and, 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 and any other form of any other form of good. So if a person uh, is very keen to offer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, show their devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through many of ways and they seek these ways, then this person probably will be from the, the people who will be summoned to enter from any of the gates of paradise they wish. The following hadith, وعن سهل ابن سعد رضي الله عنه أن عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن في الجنة بابا يقال له الريان يدخل منه الصائمون يوم القيامة لا يدخل منه أحد غيرهم يقال أين الصائمون فيقومون لا يدخل منه أحد غيرهم فإذا دخلوا أغلق فلم يدخل منه أحد متفق عليه this hadith is also collected by Bukhari and, Mus uh, Bukhari and Muslim from Sahel, Sahel bin Sa'd radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said in Jannah there is a gate called Ar-Rayyan and the fasting people, the people uh, of the fast will enter through this gate on the day of judgment. No, none else will enter through it. It will be called out where are the people of fasting so they will rise and obviously they will enter through it and no one else other than them will enter through it and once they enter all of them enter enter through it it will be shut and no one else will enter through it afterwards and this shows this is a privilege for the people of fasting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made a particular gate in paradise for them specifically to enter through it and there are people that probably you maybe know some of those people who the fast for them is such a great thing it's such it, it is something that they they really excelled in you find them those people other than fasting ramadan they fast maybe three days a month or uh, mondays and and, and uh, thursdays or maybe every other day uh, so these people like this gate of fasting is open for them allah subhanahu wa guided guided them to that gate Subhanallah. So these people, they, they have this special gate in paradise, which is called Ar-Rayyan, that they will enter paradise through it. And basically, again, take this also, at a, this is a real meaning, but it also, also take it at, this, at the symbolic meaning, what it signifies. It signifies that one of the things that enter people in paradise the most is the fast. And this, this basically invites us to take it more seriously. In the sense, do it as we described... Uh, yesterday do it from your heart and maintain this spirit of fast do it let your soul be fasting as well not only your body and we're going to come to some hadith about that pertain to the etiquettes of fasting that show that fasting actually is a matter of uh, um, before being a matter of physical abstention from uh, nutrition it's actually a matter of spiritual abstention from every evil and actually, you know, some of the some of the early scholars, some of them, even at the time of a tabi'in, some of them actually were of the opinion that if a person does not give up, um, let's say, swearing or using bad words or gossiping and, and backbiting, 
so during their fast, if they actually engage in these things, that their fast breaks, that these things break their fast. I'm not saying this is a correct opinion. I'm just saying that the, 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 there are there used to be scholars who actually held this opinion, and they are big scholars. They're not like smaller names. I don't think, as far as I remember, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, this was his opinion. Rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the greatest of a tabi'een, that if you engage during your fast, if you engage in backbiting, you have broken your fast. It's just like a, you've eaten. The same thing. Same thing for him. And again, I, I don't take this opinion, I don't, I don't, I don't, and I don't think it's correct. But what I'm saying, just, uh, you have to realize that this was, this is something that is held uh, highly uh, among the early scholars, which is the spirit of fasting. The spirit of fasting. And by the way, the fact that uh, this opinion is incorrect, that someone, if they engage in gossip, that they their fasting will, will break, doesn't mean that they will not be deprived of reward. Because the person might be deprived of the reward. Not that gossip just eats up the reward of, of, of the abstention, but what it basically means, if a person is engaged in abstention from food and drink, and this comes from the essence of a pure heart, and if this essence is there, then the fast is correct. And if this essence is there, the person would not engage in gossip. But if a person engages in backbiting, this shows they're not acting from that core. And probably they're not fasting from that core. They're just fasting because everyone else fasted. Or because maybe they're fasting because they're expected to. Right? They're doing it as a, as a habit. So this is something just, just to keep uh, you know an eye on and be careful about. Let's move on to the following hadith. وعن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من عبد يصوم يوما في سبيل الله إلا بعد الله بذلك اليوم وجهه عن النار سبعين خريفا متفق عليه. Again, uh, this hadith is collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abi Sa'id Al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu قال that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ma min abdin any servant who fasts a day for the sake of Allah except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will distance the face of the servant away from the hellfire by a distance that is equal to 70 years 70 years and 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 again it's, it's not about calculating what the 70 years mean in terms of distance but that means that just focus on the point behind the, this hadith which is that if a person when the person fasts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects them from the hellfire Allah keeps the hellfire away from them by a huge distance a, a distance that is even unthinkable something that is beyond our comprehension just by fasting one day and that means that just shows you how much reward there is in fasting. And the reason we mention in these hadith is just to help us appreciate that as you are fasting, you are, again, you're taking a great, there's a great undertaking that you are engaged with. This is such a great thing. So, so just be mindful of what you are doing. What you are doing is some, something great. Don't be limited to the mere physical abstention. It is such a spiritual and profound engagement. And you are doing something that the creator of the heavens and the earth is pleased with. And it's something that he appreciates. And it's something that he has prescribed. And, and, and this is something that he rewards immensely for. And, and part of this reward is that if you fast sincerely, and this fast should come from your heart again and should be sincerely done for the sake of Allah. No other motives, no other agenda. You do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah keeps the hellfire away from you. And what that means when the hellfire is kept away from you, you're just getting closer to paradise. And that's just by fasting one day. Imagine what happens if you fast the whole month of Ramadan sincerely for the sake of Allah. And you observe the etiquettes, the inner etiquettes, which is that it's done sincerely, it's done for the sake of Allah, comes truly from your heart, and you're doing it in obedience to Allah. You feel the, the sense of servitude as you are performing it. Um, 
And again here, I just want to draw your attention that you could do the fast by, by the way for health reasons. But again, you, should, you, don't want, you don't want to keep this as the center of your heart. You want to perform your fast just because Allah legislated it. That's it. Now, if in your mind, at the back of your mind, you have this notion that, um, anyways, I'm just going to get the health benefits as a byproduct of that. That's fine. But don't let that be the source of your motivation. Don't let that be the source of your energy and your patience to keep up with fasting. That's what you want to do. And it's, it's, a, it's a very subtle thing. But and you, you don't want to fight with it. What you want to do is just focus. Don't give your attention. Because many people say, how can I make my attention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And again, we, I mean, it shows that this person thinks that attention is something like... Uh, it's just like an object you move here and there and it's not inner experiences are never like physical objects that you that you handle with your with your hands it's not the same it doesn't work that way so the best way to handle inner dynamics is by focus so as you engage in fasting just focus on the fact that this is something Allah loves this is something Allah legisl has legislated and this is something that Allah appreciates and rewards for and this is something Allah is pleased with. Just focus on that and let that move you to perform the acts of fasting. Now, if the whole concept of whatever benefits, health benefits come to you from that, if they are at the back of your mind, just don't give them your attention. That's it. Don't give them your attention. And if you feel sometimes, maybe in some days, the fast will get a bit difficult and challenging and you want to encourage yourself, don't draw on. The health benefits to encourage you say okay i'm gonna if, I'm, if i keep going if i keep pushing through this day i'm gonna get so much health benefits i would say that's not optimal because it might compromise on your intention either completely or not exactly completely but it's just gonna uh, compromise on some part of your intention so what you want to do if you find it challenging through a day in the middle of a day what i would recommend is this is that you rem remind yourself you know that you are that, you, that this is such a great undertaking. This is such a great thing that you are doing and you're doing it in obedience for Allah and that Allah is there and He observes you. He's going to reward you and He's the one who can keep you going through that. That's what you want to focus on. All right, let's move on to the following hadith. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه uh, again, collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said whoever fasts Ramadan out of faith faith in Allah and seeking Allah's pleasure and reward then this person will get their past sins forgiven completely and it can't you know it can't get more beautiful than that really you fast a day and your intention is for Allah and it's just what we talked about is that you're doing it in obedience obedience for Allah you're doing that expressing your love of Allah you love Allah the source of your being Allah who brought you here Allah who gave you this world the experience and Allah who guided you to him and Allah who opened your heart to the truth and Allah who taught you about Islam and about himself and about worshipping him and he's the one who made you live through the month of Ramadan and allowed you the capacity to fast for his own sake he allowed you to obey him so that you can reap the fruits of all of that so you express that love and that gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying his command and that's basically you just do what he told you to do as simple as that and you feel the beauty of obedience there's so much beauty in in compliance with the truth when you abide by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to do there is there is a sense of dutifulness there is a sense of obedience that is so sweet and beautiful you know we, we do you know sometimes we humans we like that and we appreciate it like let's say for example you walk into a store these days people are lining up in front of stores and these are recommendations oh these are actually uh, legally binding obligatory things to do you have to keep social distance you have to line up 
and you feel a sense of obedience, a sense of compliance. That is sweet. It is subtle, but it's very sweet that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm being dutiful, right? So there is this sense. It's normal. It's, it's human. And you could feel that as you are actually performing the fast. You are actually engaged in this such a beautiful act of obedience and it's wonderful. So this will help you again, uh, like perform your fast out of faith. That what it means out of faith, out of belief that Allah is true and what Allah wants, for, wants from us is true and it's good. And that you are performing that in truth for the sake of Allah. That's what it means. And seeking the reward of Allah Basically, you're hopeful, you're hopeful uh, and you trust that Allah will reward you as long as you do uh, or perform the fast the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed. So you're looking forward to that reward, which is first and foremost, the pleasure of Allah and the acceptance of Allah. And then the other rewards, which is protection from the hellfire and then admittance into uh, into paradise these are such beautiful hadith and again they just show us subhanallah how important and beautiful this act that we are doing now so again something that would one of the most important things that would help us actually feel the spirit of ramadan and get engaged with it is to not give so much attention to the physical experience of hunger and thirst sometimes people just give undue focus to this area. And I would recommend ignore your feelings of hunger and thirst. Ignore them. They're ignorable. And, and I'm just going to mention a small example that would demonstrate this. Let's say you're hungry and thirsty. And that's what many people unfortunately do. They, they just um, turn on TV and they start watching a film or a series or a very enjoyable program. Why? Because they want to take their attention away from the uh, physical sensation of hunger and thirst. And thus they can, you know, as they say, kill the time and uh, uh, forget about the hunger and thirst. Well, if what you're watching is actually beneficial, then maybe that's a good thing. Uh, but you can still do that in a more healthy way, in, in, in a more healthy way. And that's basically just by... Uh, drawing your attention and focusing that consciousness that you have on the enormity of what you're doing that you are engaged in a great act of worship that Allah the creator of the heaven, heavens and the earth really loves and appreciates that's a great engagement you don't want to miss out on that and the moment you focus on this your attention go is taken away from the hunger and thirst and thus you don't you don't waste your time feeling bad about yourself because some people they actually spend the day especially the later part of the day just ruminating on how hungry and thirsty they are the thing is it doesn't benefit you it actually makes the the fast even uh, harder for you and probably starts compromising on your intention because you start to feel yourself as someone who's suffering as a as, as a victim and as if Allah is doing you such a great disservice by depriving you of food and drink when actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering you a great opportunity for spiritual growth spiritual growth that's what fasting really is it's an opportunity so focus on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended this thing in the first place for instead of focusing on things that that are byproduct of the process but again they just help you transcend your 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 you're, you're grounding in your physical body and it aligns you more with the spiritual aspect of who you are. So let's move on to uh, another set of hadith and these actually talk about the merits of Ramadan. So this hadith is from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu again. وَعَنْهُ رَضِيَ anhu anna رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالْ إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانْ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَصُفِّدَتْ الشَّيَاطِينَ uh, Collected by Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه that Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said when Ramadan arrives the gates of Jannah are open and the gates of the hellfire are shut and locked and the shayateen are uh, locked up
what this shows is that Ramadan is a very special time. It's not like the rest of the year. It's a special time spiritually because all of these occurrences are actually spiritual events, spiritual occurrences. Uh, they are part of the world of the unseen, something we don't have direct access to through our uh, sensory uh, uh, channels. So you can't see the, the gates of paradise open, you can't see the gates of the hellfire locked, you can't see the shayateen chained. That's all a spiritual reality for us, the world of the unseen. And these occurrences have tremendous, enormous effects on us. But apparently, physically, we don't have access to them. So the only uh, way we have access to them is, is through our spiritual nature. Because, and this is where their impact uh, is, is maximized. When, because when the gates of paradise are open, there is something in our spirit, in our spiritual nature, that feels that, knows that, recognizes that. And again, w unless we are spiritually tuned, we won't realize this. It won't know, we won't be able to feel it. But if someone is more spiritually tuned, well, it becomes more likely that they would actually feel that. And not necessarily feel it directly, but they would feel it, that there is more goodness in them. There is more connection to Allah in them. There is less distraction. They, fi they find themselves more spiritually uh, in tune. And, and, and they find themselves more spiritually oriented. Uh, and... and uh, yeah, and they feel the evil in them and the evil tendencies and, and desires and um, orientations among them. They find them. They find that they subdue. Again, some people might have a more of a direct experience by feeling there's more blessings, there's more mercy in the world, right? And uh, there is less evil around. But again, this, this requires a high level of spiritual sensitivity. And this comes with, again, the high level of Iman, so much spiritual work. But... Um, but again, a person does not have to have a direct experience with that. They might just feel there is so much goodness that the evil, they're less inclined towards evil during these, these days. So again, Ramadan is a very special time and that means it's a, it's a great opportunity and we should not miss out on. This is what it means. So it's a time for you that uh, the bar has been brought uh, to a lower level where you can reach it without having to be at such a high level of Iman and spirituality. It's just, it's more of a discount time. You can get a lot. You can get a lot of reward. You can get a lot of Iman without um, naturally or otherwise qualifying for that level throughout the year. That's what, that's what it basically means. So you should use this time. And again, you should uh, take it seriously. Any distractions that you can actually uh, either subdue or, or minimize or even completely eradicate, then probably you should do that in order to uh, put as much as you can of your focus on the act of fasting and other acts of worship that we can perform during Ramadan, which we are going to come to, inshaAllah. وعنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال صوموا لرؤيته وأفطروا لرؤيته فإن غبي عليكم فأكملوا العدة فأكملوا عدة شعبان ثلاثين واتفق عليه وهذا لفظ البخاري وفي رواية لمسلم وفي رواية مسلم فإن غم عليكم فصوموا ثلاثين يوما. So collected by Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه that Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said fast for seeing the crescent and stop fasting for seeing the crescent meaning start ramadan and end ramadan for seeing or sighting the moon the crescent and if it is um, kept screened from you in a sense uh, it was cloudy nights there was clouds and obviously it's impossible to see the crescent so the prophet وسلم, says if this is the case then you complete Ramadan 30 days. So the Prophet here was mentioning um, uh, was mentioning the, uh, the he was mentioning the fast of Ramadan that Ramadan should be completed 30 if again you were screened from seeing the the crescent um, on the 
on the 29th night you could not see the crescent due to the clouds okay due to the clouds and this also applies to the month of uh shaban which is before ramadan if it whether if it's 29 or 20 or 30 days because the lunar months are either 29 or 30 so this is why you have to start observing them beforehand so if you see it uh, the month of uh, on the 29th of shaban if you see the um, crescent of ramadan then uh oh, sorry on the 30th night you see the crescent uh, of Ramadan then Shaban is 29 days uh, same thing applies at the end of Ramadan the Prophet is basically here giving us a hadith and he's he's demonstrating how we mark the beginning of the month and the end of the month so with this inshallah we first uh, we finish our first uh, session in Ramadan during Ramadan again uh, don't forget to make dua for yourself and for us and for everyone all the Muslims uh, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for everyone and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fast and our recitation of the Quran uh, again my recommendation is utilize this month take advantage do your best it is such a great opportunity and again with the lockdown Allah many things are just easy for us because most of us have way way more time than we uh, had in previous years this opportunity might not come again we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us jazakumullah khairan wa taqabbal allah minna wa minkum wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam